You're still watching it. It's the Men's Review right here on Metro Television. My name is Desi Fader and the star boy here with Harry Taddy and Esido Alcumia. We've got a guest joining us for our discussion segment and he is everything when it comes to movies. So, I mean, an actor, director, producer, everything you can think about. Yes, <laughs> Pascal Amalfo is our guest mm -hmm. this afternoon. Oh, you're welcome to the show, Pascal. Thanks for having me. And happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah, I saw that on Facebook. Like, yeah. Well, how, how does it feel when you're celebrated, when people, you know, talk about, you know, the good stuff that you do? I wonder about the bad stuff you don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, you feel good. And for me personally, it just reminds you of the weight of influence you have and what you're doing with it. You know, you mm. wonder, for me, the weight of responsibility that I, I have in my hands. And I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm making, you know, positive impact. And, well, from what you can see, what people say, you know, I think you're doing good. Give yourself a pat on the back and you can now look forward to what lies ahead of you. Yeah, and, and this time the impact um, has been coming from the pulpit. Uh, well, I don't really like that when people say that. I think that the church is just a little part of what impact should be like. Because for me, I say that church is Monday to Saturday. Sunday is just for celebration of service. It's what, who you mm -hmm. are when you're not, when the worship is not on. That's church. It's okay. the impact in this field. That's, which is why I continued in the secular space, which is in the industry, when people get into a space and have an encounter, we go, oh, I saw the angel, and they run into a forest and, and stay there. But I say, what, what power has your light to shine if not, quote unquote, in the midst of darkness? Mm. So why be a Christian on a mountain somewhere and just be there facing your when you can actually make impact in the spheres of life? So I think for me, it's beyond the pulpit. It's everyday people we meet on the street, on set, you know, words of advice, how they see your life and they see the God you preach in your life and how you live it. So that's what Okay, that, that, that's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, how's, how has producing or, I mean, um, yeah, production work and acting, the, which one, you, you, it was the acting that started first, of, of production? Course, yes, we all so, can so how, <laughs> that's, that's how it started, to get to understand the game and then get into production. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how was the transition like for you? Uh, for me, because I came from a very core Nollywood background, which mm. is like a Nigeria, it's like, I heard you coming up in Nigeria, you know, it's a huge industry there, so everybody wanted to act. So I realized, you get, you know, taken for granted because you simply want to act. And mm -hmm. I realized I have a knack for wanting to tell stories that I write in. So it progressed from wanting to act to being a writer. And then I wrote for a couple of years. And then I felt, okay, well, maybe I could interpret my stories better. And I tried my hands on directing. So that was the natural progression for me. But I think I've always had something for wanting to tell my stories. Some people say, call it weird, a bit unusual. Mm -hmm. But it's just my... It's just the way my mind works, and I, I seem to have that click and that wow factor in my mind when it picks onto something, and yeah. that's it for me. Okay, so uh, I've actually always wanted to ask a producer or director that I meet. You know, um, there are producers who, the movies that they make, they find, you find them acting, being a part of the movie as well. Now, I wonder, is it that... Those particular roles, because you, you, you've, you've uh, produced a, a couple of movies that you've been in yeah. yourself. So I wonder, is it that, okay, so the roles that you, you play in there, you don't get any other person to play those roles perfectly, and so you would have to do it yourself? Well, maybe I should speak for myself on this one. For me, that's always the case. Oh. And I don't play... I come in for like maybe like one scene or two scenes. Yeah. And I put okay. weird stuff and in vessel. Or, mm. Yeah, I don't do I don't <laughs> yeah. like yeah, don't do yeah, with you, yeah, for yeah. just a short. I don't, I don't like love me, I love you. I don't yeah. <laughs> I'm not in for that. Yeah. So yeah, I come in for the weird stuff. Maybe I'm like a narrator or some mm. crazy professor or some psychopath. Yeah. I don't you know, I just that they so I, I usually do that for me and, and when I did the the famous Boko Haram, it was because nobody wanted to play that role. I was like, no, oh. I can't put my hands in Boko Haram film and yeah, and it's okay, I'll do it. So for okay. me, I think the stress of being behind the camera is a lot for me. Right. So I don't want to be in front of it. Yeah, so, but when it comes to roles, I think, okay, this might add a particular spice. And I don't quite fight the person to do it. And I step up and I just do it. And usually it's one scene or two scenes and I'm out. Uh, for others, I don't know. Maybe yeah, for, for me, costs. for others that I, I know, know, they are from the beginning of it to the end I of it. I don't know how. <laughs> they make a lot they of appearances in there. Maybe, and I wonder why you're not getting love, any other they actor. Love the screen. Maybe they love the screen. Or maybe they, were, maybe they were baseline actors and then kind of veered off into directing. So deep exactly. in the business, they still yeah. have nurtured that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me behind the camera, I'm going, I'm wearing my Charlie I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm, right. I'm, I'm always, I, I don't find the composure now to be in front of the camera when okay. I accept, okay. you know, the need for it comes. Right. Now, mm -hmm. let's, let's look at you writing your, your movies. 
what is your biggest inspiration? Because anytime I see a movie from Pascal, the the title is quite I don't I'm looking for the right word. Weird or mind boggling. Oh. Not the usual. Where do you get your inspiration from? Uh okay. Prior to my whole encounter with God, I usually say I had crazy imagination. Now I know I will now link it to the God factor. Mm. But I am not a typical, I don't get high on anything, forgive me. I don't, I don't, I don't smoke, I don't drink. Right. I basically bite my nails and I, <laughs> 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 and I'm 2 a.m., 3 a.m. just brainstorming. Right. I think I just think out of the box. I think that's what helps me. I just want to see things from the unusual angle. And, yeah. and it just helps me not do the ordinary. And um, we have a very peculiar industry, so mm. we don't have all the money for movies and yeah. to create, you know, sci-fi fiction. So we don't do yeah. Spider-Man flying around. <laughs> like, we don't do that, yeah. We stick to drama and rom-coms, basically. <laughs> so it means that within that limited space, because first of all, when you want to produce, you're thinking, hey, where will I find the money from? Yeah. yeah. If I write a helicopter yeah. and I land on Metro TV, well, how am I ready? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't even think, you're already, you're already limited by your imagination. So you must now, within that space, now think deeper how can I, even within all of this I'm dealing with, no funding for films, yeah. go beyond what's normal? So for me, I think, for me, that's why I think it's just, just the God factor. I don't, I don't really stress it. I just wake up with it or I go to bed with it. You know, I, I, I don't sleep. I haven't slept before 3 a.m. for, for Ooh, almost wow. years in my life. It's not possible. It doesn't happen. So the nighttime is my space for thinking. I have a yeah. diary. I write down stuff a lot. There are stuff. God in African was having saying about this for two, two years now. Mm. So there are films I'm saying, okay, I'll do this in five years. Right. I was telling someone that I said, I, I said, I can't imagine that we've seen several films from Mandela and there's no film on Nkrumah. Yeah. Yeah, come to think of it. Oh. <laughs> Ma Man True. Mandela has been remade. And yeah. Norris Fishbone, Ma Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Everybody has been Mandela. No film on Nkrumah. Well. True. So. Well, that, 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 let's just get straight into God is African then. Yeah. Um, this movie, tell us about it. God, God, God is African. <laughs> is God really African? Is he? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, when, when this came out, I said, okay, I'll have to find an answer because I know I'll get asked this. Mm -hmm. So I, I was telling my assistant, I said, to the very old woman somewhere in, you know, Ketel, Ajidome, somewhere in Volta, God is Mao. Mm. God speaks El. Okay. She probably never heard God as El Shaddai or Elohim. If an angel appeared to her and said, I am the Lord, she would rebuke the angel. <laughs> to the guy in Congo, mm -hmm. God speaks French. God is French to the Spanish. So we all have the ability to see God from whatever perspective that he appeals to us. And he's a multifaceted God. He's a yeah. double breasted God. So God reveals himself in a very dy dynamic way. And in Africa for okay. us here, he's expressed himself in a very unique way. Mm. And I think we undermine that uniqueness because we are so used to playing church. But there's something there that I think that if we tap into, there's a blessing here that, that's underneath all of our you know, issues that we go through, whether it's politics or economics. Yeah. Okay. So I think that if we accept that uniqueness, we will reveal God in a very true and new way that will change the face of Christianity. So that's it. God that's is a God is African. So let's watch the trailer. When we come back, we uh, wrap up on the conversation. that you didn't want to hear about just a few months ago. Yes, 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 Daniel, yes! I want to see you face to face. This is impossible. God, sit down! What? Didn't you say in Psalm 138 verse 2 that he, he has exalted his word above his name? Didn't you say that? Do I need to remind you? Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 that he is not a man that he should lie. Should I remind you? God, should I remind you? Or did you lie? Who really is God? You lie! You lie! You lie! Okay, so, <laughs> so, I Those mean, bumps, right? that, that is yeah. just, so, oh. I don't know if there there's, there's a, I am okay. feeling cold. I'm trying to find the Very, right way I am that. glad I didn't watch it before the show. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm really feeling yeah. it. I'm feeling it. I mean, what, what wow. sort of message or, you know, moral do you want to tell with this? Anybody who will come out to watch this? Christianity is not a religion. God isn't scared of our questions, our doubts, our fears, our contemplations, our struggles. We revealed God in a very 
you know, deity kind of way. He's not like that. Mm. No matter the issues in our lives, God wants to have a conversation with us. Africans have put God in a certain dogma. Okay. And we don't, it limits us accessing who he is. He's not just God, he's a father, he's a friend, he's a companion. Actually, there are moments in your life where it's not just speaking in tongues and crying. Once you've got sit down, I want to talk to you. Yeah. And as we go through the life of this character, there's a depth in there that will challenge the faith of every Christian. You will ask yourself mm. questions that you did. Your pastor never told you this before. Mm. Wow. And they are deep there. And at the end of the day, it comes together that we see God in a new light that I think will help every believer, every African indeed, and anyone who assumes and believes the fact that there's a God. Mm. And when is it coming out? Okay, April the 15th, 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 9.30 p.m., Accra Mall, Silver Bed, and then West Hills Mall. Come out and see you guys. Okay. That's uh, two weeks from today. Good Friday, yeah, yes. Good, good Friday. Friday. <laughs> it's a good Easter movie. Come see God in the new light. It will bless you. Wow. That was great. I saw Rosalind Giza. Yeah, Rosalind Giza, yeah. DM your calendar, which I think is amazing. That Rosalind, I think this is Rosalind Giza's year. Amazing. You will, uh, goosebumps. She, she, she yeah. nailed it. Yeah. She nailed it totally. She nailed it. Okay, great. But before you, you go, though, uh, the Ghana, I was at the NFA meeting with stakeholders, corporate Ghana. Um, where we get to my, how would we get money for a movie industry? Why well, I did that? Because they invited me. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like, the invite is in my mail, Lord. <laughs> oh, oh that's, okay. I missed that one. This, this is a whole show. This talk is a whole I, show. I, I, know, right? I don't know. I, 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 hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't start from. I, I don't know if I think there has to be a deliberate governmental policy mm. on film. The government has to see that this is a money spinner. Yeah. It's an industry. It's not a couple of young people running around with cameras. It's yeah. an industry. When we tick that box, you know, it's an industry. It can generate revenue. It's, it's money. It's a money spinner. Then we we'll get other things right. For now, it's still a hustle. It's a basic hustle. I'm here because I'm thinking, God, if I don't sell tickets, how am I going to tell my investor? Mm. Basically. I don't, you know, there's no policy on film. There are no, there are no, there are no discounts on hotels, whatever it is. So it's still a hustle until the government has a definite stand. And they, this is an industry. It must be helped. It must be protected. It must be funded. Then private sector will take us serious. For now, we just keep doing our thing and trusting that God is an African. Hi. Thank you very much, <laughs> Pascal Abafo, for joining us um, okay. here. So watch out. God is the African. 15th April, Silver Bird, at 6, 8, and 9? 9, 9.30 p.m. Yeah, 9.30 p.m. So that's it for the show today.